Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be tackling a bit of flower bed cleanup out here in the South Garden. It's a bit breezy, a little bit chilly, but the sun is out for the most part. We woke up to rain and like the wind was blowing really hard, so I'm thankful that it's shaped up a little bit. This is what we're working on, both sides of this flower bed here. You can see what our grass looks like in the winter. Boy, it's a different place uh, during the growing season. Everything just browns out really nicely in the winter. I think it was 2021 when we started planting some things out here. The grass pathway had just gone in. It was very, very rough out here, but it's starting to take shape. We added quite a bit more this past season, so I'm very excited about it. We've got quite a bit of just perennial cutback in this area, ornamental grasses. There's a few hydrangeas, a couple roses. Let's walk through it first. I'll give you a tour of what we're going to be doing, and then I would like to set a timer so I could show you real time how long it takes to do a project like this for me. I've noticed that question like how long does this actually take you and sometimes I don't really know. So we've got a few hydrangeas in here. There are three on this side and three on the opposite side as well as some uh, Russian sage, the denim and lace, which I love. We'll be cutting that all the way back while we'll only just be doing a light trim on the hydrangeas. We've got some annual alyssum that we'll be pulling up. See that? Dang. There's a tumbleweed right there. Some echinacea. There's a bunch of nepeta through this whole area. We've got nine barks, which we'll just be leaving alone. There's ornamental grass. We'll be cutting that back. Oh, uh, let's see. We've got some hardy geraniums right in the front here that just need a light trim. We've got some yarrow in here. There's Veronica, some sedum right there. And then there's some roses, which I'm just going to basically just clean up. They were fairly small when I planted them and they're not very big, so we won't do much. And then on this side of the flower bed, again, we've got the hydrangeas and the Russian sage. We've got some Heliopsis right here. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Ornamental grasses that need to come down. Echinacea, there's more alyssum in here. Nepeta, there's some roses kind of popped back in this area. Uh, let's see, what did I have here? Minarda. There's a budlea, which we'll probably just leave alone until it starts to leaf out. Another couple of budleas in here, which we will leave alone. And then there's some uh, serendipity alliums looking nice. Uh, the echinacea and sedums right in here. Hibiscus will come all the way down. There's a hydrangea, some amsonia, another budlea. And then depending on how we're feeling, we'll come over onto the back side of this flower bed. There's just a couple of pockets of plants. So right back in here. There's uh, some Baptisia, Daylilies, Monarda. I guess it really doesn't matter what they are. It's just like a whole bunch of brown. Oh, now aren't these false spireas? These are the Mr. Mustard. They add such beautiful winter interest. That's so pretty. And in this corner, we've got hibiscus that need to be cut back. The Budleas here we'll leave alone. Uh, Russian sage cut back. Veronica's cut back and the hydrangeas trim. Oh, and I guess there's this little section right here where we've got some totem pole panicums that need to come down as well. So here are my tools of choice for the day. I've got a pair of Felcos here. That's kind of for more individual pruning. For our larger stands of perennials, I use hedge trimmers. It goes a lot faster and then I just rake up the bulk. Woo, wind. Gah. Two sizes of rake. They're both made out of the same material. One is just more narrow than the other. And this one's quite a bit wider. And a kneeling pad may or may not use that. There's not a whole lot of art to this part. I mean, the perennials will cut back to, you know, a couple inches above the ground. Hydrangeas and roses, we just do some selective pruning. I have uh, done several videos showing you kind of close up on that process. But today I just want to whip through and get this done. So I've got my phone here. We're going to start a stopwatch and go. <laughs> Done with the left side, it took me 38 minutes. I'm not sure there's much point to raking. I did kind of a rough job of it. Hold on. Ah. 
anyway, I'm not sure that you could hear that very well. Hopefully the audio isn't horrible. I apologize if it is. But anyway, what I was saying is I don't think that there's a ton of point in doing a really fine job of raking. Another gust. Because the wind is just blowing everything around today. I'm not going to lie, it actually kind of feels good. You get nice and warm when you're up and down, but using the hedge trimmer really makes things a lot faster because you don't have to do like a perfection job. You just want to get them cut back and it saves your wrist too. So if you have a bunch of cutting back to do, uh, hedge trimmers are where it's at. I'm going to go grab our pop-up bag because I do have a few piles of just finer materials that I can't really pick up. Uh, anyway, there's like three of those in there, but it looks slicked up, cleaned up. We need to add a bunch more winter interest. And there is some in here, and the perennials do act as such. But when you cut them back, it just looks so sad for a little while. But we've got a Zephyro blue spruce in here. There's some Arctic fire uh, dogwoods back in here and another blue spruce there. We're working on it. This was my take from this side of the flower bed. We are going to go dump it in the pasture and we'll come back and tackle this side. We're at the other side now, starting lap number two. We're at an hour and 29 minutes. So this side took 38 minutes. This side took 51 minutes. It's quite a bit more on this side. My goodness. Now all we have left are the little areas toward the back side of this bed. All right, so the third area, which consisted of perennials over there, here, and then the grasses and hydrangeas there, took us 29 minutes, and that does include emptying the trailer as well. So an hour and 55 minutes total to clean out these flower beds. And you know, that time will increase as we put more things out here. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what kind of time we're spending out here at the moment. And of course, if the blessed wind wasn't blowing so hard the whole time, it probably would have gone a little bit faster and I was moving cameras around because I'm out here by myself. So uh, anyway, you can shave a little time off for that, I suppose. But even though the leaves were blowing all over the place and I wasn't able to get it super clean, I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm ready for the season and it is ready for the season. Just tidied up. We're getting ready to have some of our first loads of compost delivered. Uh, so we will be top dressing all of these beds with brand new compost. So all of the drip lines will be covered and all the plants will have a little bit more protection. That should happen here in the next little bit. Now, the one thing I did skip when I got to this area, I had been de-leaving all the roses and I just kind of <laughs> by this point thought, you know what, I'm coming out here on a nicer day. 
and I'll take care of that one and these right here. Now I guess the wind is kind of helping me rake a little bit, just spreading it out. This is a little bit of the leftover compost from last season. Just wanted to show you what it looks like because this is what we mulch with right here. We just buy it bulk from our local rock yard and I really like it. Oh, I missed a weed over here. Ah, I think I got the whole thing, yes. So this bed is nice and tidied up. Oh, look at that, just blowing all the bald cypress leaves everywhere. And this one looks nice and tidy, needs some mulch, but it's ready to roll. And the area with, these are quick fire hydrangeas and totem pole panicums all cleaned up. And we've got some rocks. We're ready to roll on this pathway. We want to get it done. And you guys, that is going to do it for today. That is all I'm going to take care of out here, uh, other than my indoor watering tours in the greenhouse and the studio. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you live in an area like we do where there's a lot of wind uh, and you can have lots of dry spells, if you planted anything late in the season, do give it some water. We are watering all of the great big evergreens we had installed late last season and anything else like the boxwoods around the Hartley. Those things were keeping uh, well watered. So yeah, you just don't want them to dry out. It's on the forefront of my brain today because of all the wind. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.